Hi there, I'm Java Jim with First Line Equipment. And today we are going to be going over the Firenzato F64 XGI Espresso Coffee Grinder. And what is special about this grinder? Well, the main thing that mostly sticks out is it weighs the grinds right into your portafilter uh, for single and for double. So uh, this is something that's kind of a leap ahead uh, that will do a very good job. It is a full-size commercial grade grinder. Uh, it does have a large bean hopper. It's roughly around 26 inches in height. There's no smaller bean hopper. It is also a micrometrical stepped adjustment. And when I say step, because there is a locking mechanism on the side over here. And here you see a silver one. Uh, we do now carry these in chrome. The silver was only the prototype that I took home and started testing and playing with with uh, this grinder at home. So it is a little bit on the high side, uh, can be a hindrance or an obstacle for some, especially with the cupboards that might be at 18 or 20 inches uh, from your countertop. So that might uh, be an issue, but in a coffee shop setting, restaurant, uh, fabulous grinder, and also for the home with the 64 millimeter burst. Now what's included with this grinder? Of course, uh, the grinder itself, the tray, that's made of stainless steel. And uh, it looks white here, but it's actually, there's a film that's on top of it. Sometimes they take it off, sometimes they don't. So you will find the tray, uh, the drip tray, which is in case you have any spillage, uh, the drip tray will hopefully uh, carry it. Then we have the conspiracy in Italy, as I always say, a cheap, plastic tamper. I'm not even sure why they include these things. I think these are a waste. Uh, get yourself a good tamper. If you can't afford it, then live with it, but definitely uh, get a tamper. So it makes a nice paperweight. If you get one with your espresso machine, you have two of them. You and your wife can throw catch or with your kids or your dog. If you want to throw catch or something, I don't recommend for the dog because I don't want them choking, but uh, a waste. We have our instruction manual. Uh, a little roughed around the edges because I took this home to read it, uh, use it, experiment with the grinder. And then we have some little components here. Uh, you'll have to see later for what this is for. So stay tuned. Okay, once you get your grinder, make sure there's no damage uh, to it. If there is, don't use it. Uh, contact us immediately. Uh, you'll take the bean hopper. I have it filled with some beans here but there's a little uh, screw on the side here. Make sure the hole on the hopper lines up with the screw and then you can push in a screw. If it doesn't go in that easily, it means it needs a little adjustment, don't force it. You can basically do this by hand uh, to get it all the way in and also to get it out. If you wanna tighten it, you can, but I just like to do it by hand. Um, the knob or the little lever can be uh, placed on different sides of the grinder. This is the adjustment lever or knob for changing the grind settings. If you don't like it, you can basically change your settings with uh, your hand, but um, I do like to use the lever when it is available. And uh, as I say with all grinders, uh, please change the settings while it's running. Uh, you don't want the burrs gunking up on the inside because then all you're gonna get is a grind that is very, very coarse and then you have to go through this whole procedure to get it out without taking it apart. Don't take things apart. If it's good, leave it alone. If you do change the settings and the grind's very coarse, take it out to the coarsest setting while it's running and then bring it finer as it's running uh, continuously with beans because that will sometimes flush out the gunk that ha happens between the burst sets. Uh, plug in your grinder and then you basically want to turn it on. You have your drip tray in the front. Your little light will come on over here and it takes a few seconds to load, which it says E, and I went too fast on the screen there. Here we will have uh, the temperature and the humidity levels. And then uh, you'll have the totals. Wow, see how sensitive that was? And basically a very, very fine grind that came out. But let's go over the menu. So uh, to get into the menu, you would hold this cup or half cup or single dose cup for about five seconds and now everything basically uh, turns yellow that means you're in programming mode and basically uh, 
when these light up, you know you're there. And now it says language. And let's go select that right there. If you want English, okay, Italiano, Espanol, Frances, Deutsch, Portuguese, and if you want to comment below, let me know what that is because I definitely cannot pronounce that. Malaysia, and that one too. That looks like Japanese, but I could never say that. But if you want to pronounce them, put it below, please do. Ravatsky, um, just to let you know I'm Croatian, so that's probably for me because uh, that looks like Croatian. And we'll go back. You would think the menu would cycle, but it doesn't. So we'll go back to English because that is the language I speak best. And let's hit enter. Okay, so now we have to get into the menu again. Okay, now we want, it says arrow that way, move that, that way to the time. And right now it says uh, basically a 24 hour clock. So 4.32 PM. I'm not sure what time it is here in New Jersey right now. Uh, 5.32, 4.32, we'll just leave it at that. Hit enter. And now uh, the minutes, I'll just hit enter there. Okay, so it doesn't stay on the menu. Uh, you do have to go back in every time. A little bit of a hassle, but that's okay. Language, time, time layout, 12 hours, 24 hours, and see, you can't go that way. So back to, if I wanna go 12, but I'll keep it on the 24 hour time clock. Hit enter, go back in. Hold it, okay, go back to time, time layout. Date, November, that's okay. 12th, it is November uh, 12th, the day before Friday the 13th. So we'll hit enter there. And it is 2020, what a wild year it has been. We'll hit enter, we'll go back in. So a lot of people don't know, humidity level actually plays a great deal in the grind quality or the fineness of the grind. Uh, so it's nice to have the humidity level because I notice when humidity levels change, you got to change the grind fineness. Time layout, date, and then temperature. And you want centigrade or Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit, hit enter. And I know I'm boring you with the details, but I want to show you the capabilities of this great grinder here. Brightness. Okay, 50%. I don't like the higher percentages because I think the display will go faster. So uh, in daylight, go with the, the minimum. So right now we're at 10% and it changes as you change it. So. Like right now, I can be at 30%, but I'll put it back to 50. Hopefully it shows nicely on the camera. And we'll hit enter there. The humidity level changed uh, 1%. It's because I was doing too much talking before, all the humidity coming out of my mouth. Okay, information. Okay, there's a version number. and that should be it. Okay, so a little bit of a hassle to go back into the menu every time, but that's it. Pretty easy for uh, changing things on the menu. Uh, it looks like I must've changed to Celsius there. So let's go back and put Fahrenheit.
I think there we go. Okay, now we're back. Now it's all up to 80 degrees. All the hot air I'm breathing out, humidity level went down a little bit, the temperature went up. It's all the hot air I'm breathing here on the machine. So remember the two parts I showed you before? Um, we, the grinder does come with a portafilter holder. So uh, you can use single, double, and it should hold also uh, with the lip right here, should hold your bottomless as well. However, um, there's nothing in the instruction manual about these two components and the two screws. Uh, so the only thing I could figure out is this little platform here. There's two scrolls here, two here, and this would go in here with the two screws, and this would help with holding the uh, spout right here, because if you notice, it kind of fits. So it kind of makes sense. I just can't figure out, I've used it without this, but if you're gonna do the weight scale here, this either has to go on or off, okay? So you don't put this on after programming it, but if I hold this here and lock this and hold this from the back, actually, if I can, uh, this will help with uh, the single or double spout, not necessarily the, the uh, bottomless. So if you want to install this, it's either this way or this way. There's no instructions for this uh, in the manual and there's no uh, cheat sheet or uh, any type of sheet that comes with the grinder on this. So I'm pretty sure that's where it goes. Uh, you know, things happen like that, but uh, basically that's where you wanna put those two pieces. Now, if you want to adjust, say you have a very deep portafilter, and this is really designed mostly for 58. I haven't tried with a 53 or 57, but from the looks of it, it may be a 57 as well, but I doubt a 53. Now, if you have a deep portafilter, there's two adjustment screws here, Allen keys that are needed. I'm not sure of the size. The Allen keys were not included with the grinder, so you'll need your own. Uh, and then you can adjust this holding platform right here. Okay, so if it's too deep, but this, this is fitting nicely right here. To program the grinding weights, we'll hold in the double cup symbol, about five seconds. We get into the menu and let's hit enter for dose weight. Okay, the single we have at seven grams, hit enter, 14 grams. Okay, we hit enter. So you could program these separately. We'll go back into the menu and we'll make a change. Okay, say we want 7.1, hit enter, 14.2, hit enter. That's how easy it is to change the weight. Okay, so for calibrating the grinder, pull the two cup button in, and then we go over to calibration. Now there is a secret code. Let's hit the enter. Zero. Seven. Eight. Now we're in calibration. And basically, again, no beans on the unit. The bean hopper is off. And let's hit enter. It's doing a tear. Do not touch the grinder. Don't touch the table, vibrate anything. And it's gonna go through this whole process here. Now, it says place 1,000 grams of weight on it. So what do we have? We have some Sega Fredo coffee. And basically, uh, it's not saying to put the bean hopper back on. Uh, so we'll put it right up here. Do not touch the grinder. So 2.2 uh, pounds, just so you know what a kilogram is. So we'll put that there. Okay, remove. Okay, please reboot the grinder. Reboot. Okay, we power off. 
Turn it back on. There's a little delay. And just to let you know, while this is going through, okay, there is a little mechanism here. If you want to clean the chute, it is possible to do that. So a nice little feature here. Okay, next thing, hold it the double cup button in. And we have calibration. We have blades replacement. And basically 400 kilograms, which is over 800, I guess, 80 pounds. Okay, so we have that. And let's go back into the menu. Okay, if you want to reset it, it would be done here. Reset blades timer in kilograms. Yes or no. Okay, let's hold that there again. Reset doses, if you want to reset the doses. Statistics, if you want that. Manual grinding. Uh, the manual grinding would typically be this button here. It's usually for 30 seconds. Auto calibration. Which means, let's go in there. It's active, okay? If you don't want it active, you can turn it off. A little bit of a pain in the butt to go into the menu every time, I will have to say, but I guess that's the way to save it. And that's the last of the menu. Let's go back to manual grinding. Active manual button. Okay, if you want to turn it off, that's it right there. So I prefer to leave it on just in case you need a little extra coffee grinds. Okay, now to get started, we'll put the bean hopper back in. So now we'll load some beans in. Right to the very last bean. Okay, we'll lock that in. Don't forget the stopper right here to allow the beans to get into the neck. Let's load the double portafilter in and let's hit grinding button double cup. And we basically have a lot of coffee there. So try to keep this area clean as well. This is from the overload. Okay, let's try the single. Okay, the single worked out to be much better. The double, not so much. So we probably had too much coffee come out on the double cup. So let's go into the menu. And this is where it can get a little confusing. And let's go back to auto calibration and see it says active and non-active. Let's go to active. So now it says, please reboot the grinder. Let's turn it off for 10 seconds. Turn it back on.
and now it says welcome to the first run procedure now you may get this when you first get the grinder so it says that here let's hit enter English where you select the language single dose grams 7.5 you want to increase or decrease increase that way decrease that way hit enter 14 grams less that way more that way with the buttons hit enter and it says grind regulation okay press the button okay and it just pressed and it's not really doing anything but what you do here is just keep running it stop clear okay now the drip tray you see it's white that film comes off sometimes it is off already by the manufacturer so now we'll hit this button here it says please do not touch the grinder now it's waiting for a tear single dose test Reading weight, don't touch the grinder. Just pull this out a little bit here. I don't want the gr coffee grinds touching here. Double toast test. Okay, I'm gonna pull the tray out a little bit as it's grinding. This coffee's building up down here. And now it says first run complete. And let's put in the double. Okay, press the double here. And as you could see, much better than before. So before, basically what it was in, there's two modes. There's the uh, auto calibration mode. Uh, and then the the standard mode which uh doesn't have the auto calibration so that's there and let's put the single in let's try the single and much much better so then we can adjust our dosages here so this is how it's weighing the grinds there's a little scale that's up here okay let me throw this coffee grinds out let's try it one more time see if it's consistent it says 7.1 grams and on right in there it says 7.1 grams so we're pretty close to one tenth of a gram let's try the double and let's try this so we're about uh, right this actually 14 about 14.4 grams let's try it again and showing about 14.5 so it's about uh, probably half a gram or so uh, differentiation but pretty good now, if the portafilter is wet, it'd probably be a little less. Might be compensating if the portafilter is a little wet. And then here, 7.5, 7.5. Okay, so let's go into the menu here. Dose weight. 7.5 and then 14 so about a, on a 14 we're about a half a gram uh, difference hit okay let's go back to the double So now we're at 14.2 grams. So a little bit of an improvement. So 
uh, the, the grinder is trying to achieve as best as possible, almost to uh, a tenth to a half a gram in the dosage of uh, the grinds. So um, really, really nice. I, I'm very confident in this grinder. And uh, just to show you uh, the pluses and minuses, as you could see in the beginning, we overfilled the basket, but now we can program it. And the beauty about the weight is if I change the settings, it should compensate that on the weight scale that's here. So now uh, you could see that this grinder can get a little complicated with all the features. But again, great, great grinder. Couple things, uh, cleaning, uh, bean hopper. We sell uh, a product called Pulley Verde. It's on our website. It's kind of like a spray. Uh, if you have oil buildup here, uh, you can spray it on the inside and wipe it clean. I would suggest doing it once a week to once a month. Once a week if your beans are really oily, once a month uh, if they're not. Uh, if you want to clean the grinding burrs, I always say to customers, if it's well or doing well, leave well enough alone. Don't go removing the burr set. If you want to clean the burrs, uh, we sell uh, these pulley crystals on our website uh, to run it through and use that to clean the burrs. But if it's working well and you're changing the settings while it's grinding, you should be okay, even if you're changing beans. Now, a couple things. Um, and again, some of this, the instruction manual is not the best uh, from Fearon's out on his grinder. Uh, and that's why there's also some learning involved with it. You see, there's a little screw right in here. Uh, they don't mention this in the instruction manual. Uh, this basically takes the forks out if you want to clean it. It gets very oily to clean it. The screw comes out and then this slides out forward. Again, two Allen key screws to adjust uh, the holder right here. And the one thing that's always been a concern since I had this grinder at home and testing it, and even here during the video, is there's a gap between the frame and the plastic. Actually, it's not even plastic. I thought it was plastic. It's actually metal. Uh, of coffee grinds getting stuck in here. But if any coffee grinds get in here, it's gonna end up underneath the grinder. So you are going to need to move it and clean underneath. This is basically just a holding um, frame right here. And any grinds that get put in through here will end up on the bottom because there is an opening on the bottom. So if you have any questions, or comments, please ask down below. Uh, you can also go to the link uh, uh, that's below to our website. There's a Q and A. I prefer the questions be asked there. So we have one central place, uh, but you can ask and comment below as well. And uh, hopefully you give this grinder a chance uh, in your home, office, or even your cafe. Uh, the grinder is ETL approved, which is also a, a plus for Fiorenzato. Uh, they, again, they build quality equipment and we would not have brought them on if we didn't believe so because we're pretty selective on the equipment that we carry. Uh, and then also not just the, at the brand level, but actually at the product level. Now this grinder uh, we have in stock at the moment in chrome, not the gray. Uh, if you're local to us here in New Jersey and you want to buy this gray one at a discount, I'll be more than happy to part with it. Uh, but I am going to be also using it for some other videos uh, with espresso machines because I think it'll work very, very well. Um, so give us a thumbs up down below. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you, if you like. I uh, appreciate you if you do because we got more to come for you. And once again, this is Java Jim with First Line Equipment and have a wonderful Fiorenzato day.